Sister Agnes and Adelaide. A story written by Mary Kate Ellis and read by Ina Davis. Sister Agnes had always liked watching the school children play. They would toss a ball around to one another, occasionally kick it around, or they would play other made up games that only they understood. To them, their games were like special secrets and she never failed to feel glad when she watched them running about. After all, being cooped up inside of a classroom wasn't very good for them, not if they were there all day long. At least, that was her opinion. A little fresh air never hurt anyone. She was sitting and watching them, both of her hands politely folded over her lap. She was keeping score, though not entirely sure what score of. Either way, the sound of laughter was music to her ears, the same as any pretty song would be. They were kicking up the dust and making friends. After all, everyone needed a companion or two. She couldn't help but notice, however, one little discouraged face that belonged to a little girl that had sat herself down right at her feet, arms crossed and cheeks red, but not from playing or having very much fun. Rather, it was anger that had her looking like a little ripe tomato. Now, Miss Adelaide, Sister Agnes started slowly. I don't see what is more interesting about my shoes than this game that your friends are playing. My shoes aren't very interesting at all. She adjusted her glasses on her nose before looking down at her feet and her scuffed and worn out black shoes. No, there was nothing interesting about them when compared to the colorful pink ball that was being passed around. But the girl did not look particularly enticed to speak or to look up at her. She huffed instead, which made her look even more upset. So sister stood up and pulled her scapula aside so she did not sit on it and get it dirty too. And so beside little Adelaide she sat. <clears throat> sister Hedwig will mistake you for one of our garden tomatoes if you keep on like this, she said after a moment of silence. She'll try to add you to dinner. No, she won't, Adelaide replied unhappily. That is a very silly thing to say. Maybe so, but it could happen if you turn any more red, Sister Agnes shrugged, looking up again. Everyone was still playing. They were all having fun. So why aren't you with everyone else, Adelaide? Because it looks to me like they're having an awful lot of fun. Yes? Well, why don't you go and play with them if you think it looks so fun? Adelaide turned her face away and crossed her arms over her chest. Sister drew her eyebrows together and she slowly shook her head. Well, because I have to make sure you don't get hurt while you're playing, she slowly replied. And because I have to figure out why you don't think it looks fun. Adelaide sighed loudly, <sighs> and she pulled on one of her brown curls. Really, she looked a little bit silly to sister, but she wouldn't say that out loud. Instead, she smiled and waited as the girl thought and thought and thought and thought until she finally seemed to have an answer prepared for her little outburst. Because I'm no good at it, sister! Ah, the age-old frustration. Not being good at something. She had to do her best not to chuckle. It was a human frustration after all. But the girl didn't need someone else to laugh at her when she was already so very upset. Instead, she placed a hand on her back. I see. You do realize that you don't have to be good at everything, right? Adelaide turned her face away, reaching one of her tiny hands up to wipe at her runny nose. In return, Sister Agnes dug into her pocket 
and offered a handkerchief, though it was quickly pushed away. Even so, she didn't put it away again. She placed it over her knee and gave the little girl a moment to ponder. But I want to be good at that. Adelaide glanced towards sister and then turned her attention to the children playing with the wall. They were tossing it up in the air as high as they could, scattering like chickens when it came crashing back down to the ground and then one of them would run to grab it and try to throw it higher than last time. Every time the ball fell back to the earth, it sent everyone running in fits of heavy giggles and shrill squeals. Are you afraid of being hurt by the ball or do you think you can't throw it as high as the others? Sister Agnes plucked a piece of grass out of Adelaide's hair, even if she received a sour expression for doing so, as if she had been trying to eat a bad lemon. I can't throw it. I can't. I can run really, really fast, sister. Then don't focus on throwing the ball as high as the other girls. Focus on running fast. You can only throw it as high as you can throw it, you know? There wasn't an easy solution. She could practice throwing the ball as high as she could, sister thought, but she could become even better at running quickly. Perhaps then she would be able to outrun all of the other girls. God gives us all special talents, but they won't be all the same, darling. For instance, I am very good at mathematics, and Sister Hedwig isn't. But Sister Hedwig is much better at remembering dates in history than me. Sometimes, Adelaide, I forget my, why my own, when my own birthday is. Isn't that so silly of me? But it isn't my special talent, like Sister Hedwig, who can remember everyone's birthdays, including her own. She smiled, and Adelaide finally broke her grumpy expression to smile, even if still poutily. You really can't remember your own birthday, sister? She wiped at her nose again before shyly taking the handkerchief off of sister's knee. Not very well, sister laughed. But it's all right. I think I will stick to math, like you can stick to running fast. Adelaide then stood up and sighed. Ah, tossing one of her arms around Sister Agnes' neck. I'm sorry for being mean, sister. But you're right. I can run good, and I run away from the ball faster than everyone else. And maybe I can learn how to throw it up high, too. All is forgiven, Sister Agnes softly replied, patting Adelaide on the back. Now, go and have some fun, dear. With the handkerchief returned to her hand, she folded it up and watched as the girl sprinted back to the cluster of girls that were still tossing the ball and running around as she brushed herself off as she stood. It was okay not to be good at everything, she thought, as long as God's will was being fulfilled, even in a small game of catch such as this, then that was all that mattered.